Alrighty, everyone, welcome back to the Korean Cowboys podcast. Woo! Yes, everybody, welcome back. And you guys, today will be Corn Central because with us today, we have someone that is a big inspiration to me. Uh, I got stories there. Aaron makes fun of me for this so much, but someone that's a big inspiration to me. This is 15 years in the making. I knew this day would come one day, and here it is. Not on her show today, but on our show. Please welcome the fabulous Isa. Hi. Yes. Hi guys, this is Isa. Yay! Yay! All right, a lot of people are going to wonder. Uh, let me give a little background here on why we have Isak here today. Okay, yeah, why do we have me here today? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Isak mm -hmm. is uh, part of the reason why I entered the Korean entertainment industry. Um, You're welcome, Vance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if there was no Isak, there would be no me, and I would be living in the States, no doubt. For you guys uh, that might not know, I actually work at the radio station, Arirang, mm -hmm. with Isak on her show as a guest. So I'm there once a week. So yeah, you guys every can, Tuesday. Yeah, you guys can tune in there if you guys want a little bit more like a different more informative to where you know what yeah. I'm saying so uh, it doesn't match right he's really good though <laughs> yeah no really I mean I'm kind of like a dumbass teacher but, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what we keep it fun over there I didn't say he did yeah no, no, hey, listen you know uh, tell us a little about yourself um I ask people to do this every single week and I think it's been a good probably 10 15 years since I've actually said this by myself wow. um but I currently host the 12 to 2 p.m. Korea Standard Time time slot at Arirang Radio I'm working into my 16th year Ooh. yeah uh very briefly in my career I followed HOT to Korea which started my career and I entered SM and debuted in 2002 flopped completely and <laughs> Then I started Arirang. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and the rest is history. Um, I did a little bit of research. I mean, not oh that God. I had to because I'm a big fan, you know, and everything. But um, uh, I mean, I already you knew sure all this did, stuff. Right. You sure it was research because I feel that you already knew this information. Yeah, I, 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 okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, <laughs> you're right. The whole thing is, is like, as you guys all know, I lived in Korea when I was in high school. I came here in 2006. Isn't that the time when you started Arirang Radio? Yeah, Somewhere around, around that there? time. Yeah. Look at me with all the, the inside knowledge. I had no intention when I first came here, obviously of entering the Korean entertainment industry. Mm. I don't know how this happened, but I ended up listening to Arirang Radio at that time when it was like in its infancy. Okay. And then I like learned about who you were mm -hmm. and that you were half Korean like me. Mm -hmm. um, and then, <laughs> look at Aaron. I'm, just, I'm looking, I'm just looking. What? <laughs> he, he knows anything. this because like, say I'll get drunk. I'm like, Lee sang is my inspiration. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, yeah. Oh, so, so that's why my ears are always like itchy on a Friday night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could he's be. talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah um, I ended up starting to listen to the radio and I was like oh my gosh you were like at one time singer mm. in SM Entertainment the one at the time the biggest, biggest entertainment company in Korea the most famous right. and still like one of the largest doing it big yeah so I was like you know what what an inspiration so I started listening to a radio show and in massive cringe fashion I used to send all these messages and like you know all this like super cringy <laughs> stuff and I was like you know I look back on it now not to be spoken of well I mean <laughs> but the thing is is like I mean I come from a fangirl like perspective and I still still have that fangirl perspective mm -hmm. but if you ever watch the reply series the 1997 one where Jung Eun-ji comes out she's an HOT fan in that drama series mm -hmm. and like there's a few scenes like towards the end of the drama where they're talking about like fandom love that passion that they have yeah, yeah. like that helps you get through life like that passion to have like to love something that's true Mm -hmm. really does help you get through life so I mean they help me start my career That's so true. why can't it work for you yeah, yeah because I'm I feel like 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 fan what would you call it in English like fanship the, mm -hmm. the fan culture yeah. yeah the fan culture like you know it does like give motivation to like ones I guess I don't want to say existence but you know it does give them motivation to mm -hmm. go on through their everyday life so I think you bring up a really good point yeah, yeah. no yeah for sure I mean you what know, do you think Joel what do I think about the fandom culture <laughs> yeah yeah what do you think about the fandom culture <laughs> well in, in, a, in an odd twist of fate much like mm -hmm. you you were once an HOT fan you entered SM and you actually like got to know them oh and, yeah and in the same way like you know I was your fan and then now like I'm on your radio show so you know it's pretty cool and you know I have a question for you oh, have you ever God. written a handwritten letter 
she might not even remember this, but actually I have. I uh, think I did <laughs> <laughs> So at the time, oh my god! Wow, s o m c h o n j i k a j i This is so embarrassing. But listen, look, it all worked out. But um, because I lived in uh, Songtan at the time, and I didn't speak any Korean. I was like all about listening to Adi Dai. I asked my mom, and I was like, "Mom, can you send this to Seoul? Because I don't know how to do it." <laughs> and then she was like, "Yeah, boy." And I was like, "I just sending a letter to." You know, somewhere. And then, <laughs> I guess she sent. I guess it got the through. I don't know. I mean, I apparently. think it did. <laughs> yeah, I've been working there for a long time. But I think the, the reason why I've stayed there so long is it's a content that I still relate to. Mm-hmm. Like okay. for any foreigner who's who come to Korea, like I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Like, what am I? Where am I going to get updates? Like, I want to know what the weather's going to be like. Mm-hmm. But I don't speak Korean. Like, we want to try to provide that. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, since K-pop has gotten so big, like of course we do have a, a broad listening too. So. Right, right. You know, I've gone over. sees a lot when i went to hong kong or you know anywhere else the states even like they have already done on all the you know, mm. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a tv channel you know yeah it's available in like a lot of in most countries i would say yeah. no you know actually like for those of you guys who are long time aaron fans aaron used to be a dj at a d i d a n g radio too this is actually yes. an a d i d a n g mini reunion right? <laughs> yeah mini <laughs> reunion yeah, yeah. 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 he was on music access and i was actually on music access for a while before i moved over to your show <laughs> you know how much like i secretly hated your show for that <laughs> because like i want a d o t a l be on my show because it means so much because like he was he like has listened to the show like when for when i first started right, and right. stuff like mm-hmm. that and i was like no if he ever comes working for arirang like i want him on my show first yeah like that's what happened like i ended up getting like you know let go and then like almost right away she called me and she was like she was like hey you want to come on our show and i was yeah, like i was i was waiting for like every time we had a new season there was kept on i was just like hold on Who's quitting? <laughs> <laughs> who's who's getting the cut this time around? Yeah, if I'm really. still, if my butt's still there next season, you're mm-hmm. coming on my show. Oh, and That's it worked good. out. That's beauty right there. <laughs> Let's definitely go back to where how this all started. Oh dear. How did you end up finding your way to an audition? And this is in like the late '90s too, so it wasn't like a big thing either. And right. how did you find yourself auditioning for SM and eventually coming all the way over here? Like, what was the process? What was it like? So I'm from California. I live in the boonies of LA. If anybody who lives in LA was watching, shout out to Upland and Rancho Cucamonga because Rancho Cucamonga. See? Okay, okay, okay. There we go. So <laughs> okay. and like now, like as I've gone back to the community, I've noticed that we have a lot more Asians. We have a lot more Koreans. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more like representation, and I'm so proud. But mm-hmm. at the time, I was like one of the only Asians at my school, and so I was living with my mom's side of the family. So I had emos there. I had like my aunts in LA, my mom and dad were going through a divorce. And so we ended up living with my aunt for a while and she was the owner of a video store. Now, this is just for reference for anybody who does not know like the old time, because we have Netflix now yeah, and we have the internet. But back then, the only way that you could get Korean content was video stores. Yes. Right. Like- and my aunt was a video <laughs> store owner. And so I knew how she like process the tapes the rental fee was like a dollar a video uh-huh. and if it was a a s a g u k series that came out people would come with Gosh. empty boxes and they would come and like rent the entire like 50 60 episodes <laughs> of tapes yeah and that's how i found out who hot was oh like you had like umak bang song and stuff yeah i would spend my summers in my aunt's video store one year i saw her like taping one of the music programs and i was totally into back Street Boys and In Sync. It was like natural for me to be attracted right, to, to, like the boy, to the right. boy group, yeah, yeah, like trend. And what I loved about the team was the team's name was in English. It wasn't in Korean. Right, right. I could I could read it. I'm like, <laughs> She's like me. Like she she didn't speak any Korean before she came here. Like I can yeah I could understand it. Like mm-hmm. my mom would speak Korean to me. Shortly after, one of my cousins came from Korea. My cousin was only a year apart from me, mm-hmm. and she was an HOT fan. too oh. and that was okay. kind of our way to bond like we couldn't speak the language mm-hmm. she could speak english i couldn't speak korean but we're like uh, <laughs> yeah exactly oh, <laughs> wait, you remember who my bias was i have no i'm not that deep with it oh, now <laughs> that was my bias He's oh really was bias. Oh, was? oh i yeah. didn't know that that wow. was a guess i had no idea and then it kind of helped me dive into like uh you know Shinwa and like other groups okay. and mm-hmm. I just liked K-pop uh, mm-hmm. in general and I tried to learn Korean off of it. I was going to like Korean churches right. and I was taking like Korean classes for a summer. Uh, so anything HOT was like 
I literally put my life on the line to get it. Like uh-huh. if I would okay. go to like art box all the time to art try to box. get like any type of like memorabilia. Or nowadays we have goods, but yeah, back right. then we didn't. We had we had the Korean newspaper come to our house, mm-hmm. and I saw this page that had HOT's picture on it, mm-hmm. and I was about to go scrap it, but I realized that there was SES on it as well, and Shinma was on it too, and I was like, "Mom, what does this say?" Because I couldn't read Korean. <laughs> it's like, "Oh, they're having an audition in LA," and I'm like, Ooh. "When?" And they're like, "Oh, it's like in a few weeks from now," and I'm just like, "I'm going." And she's like, "Why?" <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so up until then, because my mom was a single mom, the only things that I did as like an extracurricular to activity, I couldn't do sports because she couldn't be the soccer mom, softball mom mm-hmm. to okay. me. Okay. Um, she couldn't pick me up from practice and stuff like that. Like right. I was carpooling at the time um, with another family. And the only thing that I could do outside of school was dance. Oh, wow. So dance and like summer camp at, you know, like an acting school, like everything I did was within the arts, Mm -hmm. whether I was good at it or not. And then I was in choir my entire adolescent life. By the time I got into junior high, I was auditioning to be a model Mm -hmm. because my mom was a hairstylist. You know, I was like hair modeling for her. Right. And so I was in beauty pageants when I was a kid and stuff like that, but I didn't have a passion for it. My mom did. Mm -hmm. I think my mom wanted to be a stage mom. (laughs) Like at heart, but like she didn't want to push me too much. Right. So when I auditioned for SM, number one, my mom said, you ain't going to get in. Mm -hmm. Number two, I didn't sign up to be a singer. Oh, really? Oh, what did did you audition for? I auditioned for everything, though. So they said that you can audition for anything. So I was in band at the time. So I took my clarinet. I had recently done Cinderella at at a theater because I was a wicked stepmom for a children's production. So I took my... Wicked stepmom lines with Uh me. And I thought I was going to be like casted as like a model or something. Uh But I went to audition and I apparently 350 people came that day. Mm -hmm. uh, Compared to the amount of the sizes of the auditions now, that's like nothing. But at the Mm -hmm. time to get 350 Koreans in LA in a hotel Mm -hmm. (laughs) to do an audition, you pretty much got the whole Southern California population in there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so I knew everybody pretty much like more than half of the people I already knew. Five of us went in to audition. They sat us down. They had us go one by one in front of the five people that we went in to Mm -hmm. audition with. As soon as I auditioned, I was like, what do you want me to do? And they're like, sing. And I was like, um. Do you remember what you sang? Yeah. What was it? Was it a like- scrub is a guy that thinks he's fine. <laughs> also known as a buster. Oh my God, I'm making myself sound so old. No, really? oh, I, didn't, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> so that's kind of how I auditioned. Uh, out of the 350 people, I was the only one that came that year. I was the Ilgi. I was the first Ooh. overseas audition right. trainee. Oh, that's true. You know, I actually knew that. From, you, from like SM ever? Yeah. Or, wow. Their first ever. Like their, yeah. their first ever like LA audition. Oh, mm. wow. That's like well, legendary. Do you think that, because, you know, everyone knows Isuman is the, yeah, the yeah, main yeah. producer of SM. Do you think he was looking specifically for a mixed person that year? I know so. So I didn't know this until like after I debuted. Mm-hmm. But apparently that day after I performed and I did my audition, they had a little discussion. Like I was in the middle. I was third. And then I had two more people audition. I was nervous AF. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Isuman's name was just like who did you come with and i was like oh my mom and my aunt and they're like after this audition is done can you come have them come in it was the most embarrassing thing in the world mm-hmm. because it wasn't like oh my god i think i got in it was like <laughs> am i in trouble am i in trouble <laughs> like i was kind of like freaking out but uh yeah my mom and my aunt came in of course everybody else is like oh, sh- 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 what's going on what's going on, what's going on? Mm-hmm. and then they came in and then like uh they were asking my mom like basic questions like does she eat korean food he was just like i want her to learn korean faster mm-hmm. so when can we bring her over oh. and so right then and there yeah like- and i think my audition was in like june or july or something like that and he's oh. like i'm coming back in august i want her to lose about five pounds and i'm bringing the contract with me prepare another korean song if i'm gonna hear it if i don't like what i see there's no contract. They're like, there's no deal. Mm-hmm. But if I like what I see, we're signing the contract. So have mm-hmm. a lawyer ready. 
Wow. Well, hot damn. I think these days maybe Isuma and he doesn't he's not as hands-on now, you think, as he is was oh, back then. Oh yeah. I've <laughs> left the company like 10 plus years ago. So <laughs> I can't I can't speak of SM now. But I mean, he was a father figure for me. Mm -hmm. Um he was he wasn't very present when we were like when I was training or anything, but just he was the only one that trusted me. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently everybody didn't want me to come that time. He oh, was the really? only person that was like, no, she's coming with us. Oh, and wow. so apparently during my training days, I realized that nobody really accepted me. Like whatever I did, it seemed to do something wrong. If I look I back know, at sister, it now, I, I feel that it was just like the other employees not understanding his vision. And mm. he's not the type of person to be like, okay, so see, I have this in my head. I want you guys to just just trust the process. He wasn't that kind of a boss. Right. He was just like, what she do, do what you do. She's an artist as well. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. that's how my trainee oh, okay. thing started. You got the contract and then you came to Korea. So like as a fan, when you first saw HOT or SES or whoever you liked back then, what was your impression? Like, did you, you obviously became friends with them later on. Yeah, I think my Songdok moment was when I was able to do a track for SM Town. Mm -hmm. And it was actually with Hijun Oppa and Kang Ta Oppa. Oh, so wow. my member and I actually did it. Don't ask me what the title of the song <laughs> is. But, um, yeah, we, yeah, it was so long ago. I don't know the title. But anyways, yeah, we did a song. We actually recorded at Kang Topa's like home studio at the oh, time. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm in Kung Tao Buzz like house. <laughs> oh my god! Of course, I didn't say anything. Right, right, right. I was like, dying keep it cool. Inside. Keep it cool. I was like, keep it cool. <laughs> <laughs> keep it cool. You went through the training period at SM, and like you know, I think that these days the training period is a lot different. Me and him had to do mental gymnastics here to figure out what generation we were. So we figured out that we're third generation idols. The yeah, generation, the yeah. idols that are out now are fourth generation. You're somewhere in the first or second generation. So I like, think I'm in second generation. Oh, are you? Then, probably. For like first is probably like like what like hot and uh, that's probably first generation yeah. right like up yeah. to cod but then again, like it, the thing is since i debuted in 2002 when i tell people i debuted in 2002 they don't really connect that how far that was but when i say who i promoted with they're like <laughs> oh they're like Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. So. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. We, we had to do some, some math on that because I had no idea. So, like, what was your training experience like? And, like, what were some things that you really remember? And, like, what was difficult about it? Like, that sort of thing. You know what I mean? Um, I think the biggest part for me was at the time there wasn't a lot of people like me. Yeah. Um, and I feel that now there's more representation for different background types mm -hmm. of trainees. But for me, nobody in SM was a mixed kid. Nobody was Korean American. Nobody spoke English. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I literally was just thrown into a country that I kind of understood, but I was learning the language as I went. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I was doing. I feel that a lot of artists these days, they know what they want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. For me, like I said, I didn't want to be a singer. I was preparing to be like a model, an actress, like a very, just like have an agent. Right. Yeah. Now it's seven years by law, but back then my contract was 10 years. Yeah. Right. It changed. And that changed actually in the process of being with SM, but because I only had it a few years left, I re-signed my contract, but with the new laws. But my trainee process, it was just a lot of trying to understand what was going on. Uh, oh, me yeah. Too. Um, me too. Pronunciation oh my God. and stuff like that. Nobody held my hand. And it was just like, no, 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 that's not how you're supposed to pronounce it. It was just like. For real. Yeah, no, like, I, I think, like, what you're saying is something that all three of us can relate to. Mm -hmm. Like, I was in the same boat as you. Like, knew, like, zero Korean, knew, like, almost nothing about the Korean culture. Mm -hmm. Came to my company and zero Korean Americans. There was, uh, I think, Becca mm -hmm. from after school. But I came, like, literally the week after she left. Mm -hmm. So I came in, like, there was no one that spoke English. And, yeah, my, like, Yonsepsang period, my training period was a lot of, like, what am I doing oh here? Right, and like, me too. Like, what oh. am I doing? Like, They're telling me like I have to, go, like I go to school, turn around, come back and I practice. And what happened was is for me, a lot of those dance classes were at night. Why? Because most of the kids had to go to school. Yeah. Right. I was the only one that didn't have to do yada or like, you know, late night. Uh, like the kids in Korea, they come to, they're finished school like four or five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, For us, like my school's at 2.45, I'm done. I'm, yeah. I'm on the bus <laughs> and I'm back over by like 3.30. Yeah, um, yeah. So I would have to sit at the practice hall in and empty room and just practice and i'm like what am i doing 
That's right. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I feel that the artists now, like there's so much technology. Like if you, if you want to be a producer, you can, you can build that foundation now. Right. If you want to be a YouTuber, you can build that foundation now. At the time, I didn't even know what I wanted to do with myself. Yeah, exactly. And there was no like <laughs> clear, like Isaac, you're going to be this. Mm -hmm. So put your heart in Right. Your time into this. It was probably just like, put you in a room, like practice. Right. Oh and God. I'm like, like what? Yeah, can yeah, you step it all the time? My dumb ass <laughs> stare at the wall all day. Don't know what the hell I'm doing. I would just <laughs> listen to music and then I would like read comic books. And oh, yeah. I was like the only one that got permission to read comic mm -hmm. books because the lady that I lived with, who was an employee at our company, she was like, for you to learn Korean faster, comic books are going to be the best way for you to yeah. pick them I up. I heard the same thing. So yeah. she gave me audition. Oh. The the really famous animation, like comic book. I, I don't know what that is. I don't remember any <laughs> of it. I was literally putting the consonants and vowels together. I was ah. You should have seen me try young. to do that. Like oh my I was God. literally doing that with like Korean music in the background. Mm. And then I was taking vocal lessons. I was taking breathing lessons. I was taking dance classes. But like the dance classes were the only ones that I felt comfortable in because I had been dancing pretty mm -hmm. much my entire life. Right. So I wasn't like this ballerina or anything, but like I took jazz class. I was taking hip hop classes and stuff like that. So I had a broader idea of dance right. than the other right, trainees. Right. Mm. And so my teachers tend to like me a lot more because I was able to follow along faster. Right. 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 I became TA. What's that? Teacher's assistant. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, teacher's assistant. Okay. My like second year as a train, like first, second year, like I was already teaching people older than me. Oh, because oh, like wow. my teachers, because they're dancers too. Right. So it's just like for those of you who watch uh, Sulpa, they like they teach for a side job, but mm -hmm. they also dance as well. Right. So if there's a comeback, they have to do music programs and then they come to teach us and then they right. go back and do their day jobs and stuff like that. So he'd be like, oh, I'm late. Like my, my teachers would be calling me. They'd be like, I'm oh. running late, start yeah, the yeah. class. Can you imagine though? Like, was there none of this? Because first of all, you would be younger than these people. Plus you're mixed. And back then things were a little bit different. Yeah. Maybe they were like, oh, why do we have to learn to dance from like a white girl? Right. Well, know? I mean, they nobody said that to me. Thank God nobody ever mm -hmm. really came out with like racial slurs. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, I think why, uh, a few years back uh, when Real Men started popping up oh, yeah. as a popular show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Definitely that show. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, the Korean military is exactly like the trainee system. Yeah, a little well, bit. It is. I've heard, yeah, I've heard that a lot. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, in the Korean training, I don't, I don't think it's like this now. But for me, if I came in as a trainee one week before you did, you're my hube now. You're my That's junior. True. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if you're older than me. He makes me do that. <laughs> makes, <laughs> what do you mean? If we're ever at Pangsungguk or something, or like at shop, he's like, "Hey, hube," and I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, uh, excuse you," you know. But I mean, he's. Just, I guess it's true. He's like, it's, "Have you ever seen true. me at Pangsungguk?" No, a friend. Of, yeah, you know? no, a friend of mine. <laughs> a friend of mine recently. She's a foreigner and uh she doesn't know anything about that she was like so if a group debuts but like the members who debuted as a rookie are older do they still have to call the remaining teams and i was like yeah and oh. she's like why it's like because they're hurt they're sombe. yeah yeah he knows more than me evidently <laughs> yeah <I> and <laughs> so it, and it always becomes like that magne card you know the youngest member card so it regardless of age you are the lowest ranking here and yeah. so you have to kind of build that up i feel that thankfully because i was an sm we didn't have it too bad like i know that for at the time that i was doing broadcast there was a lot of smaller companies a lot of these companies had some like really sketchy people working for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's probably a lot more like abuse and stuff like that that we probably couldn't even do now. Right. Oh, yeah. But for me, I think the worst that I ever got was uh, some of the managers at the time, managers, would take, you know, the plastic hammers mm -hmm. and they would smack our heads, uh, like the back of our uh, heads. Yeah. yeah, yeah like the little but like ones. getting your <laughs> head smacked for mispronouncing a word because you've never seen it written before. And I don't even yeah. know how it's even supposed to be properly pronounced. Mm -hmm is not the best thing. No, I'd, I would have done quit. Forget about that. I yeah, mean. like language too. Like that was like, I think one of the hardest things for yeah. me as well. Because mm. they used to send me to Korean school, but I would never go. And so one Wait, day- You my went to a Korean school? In like, like language school. A language oh, a language, school, yeah. Oh, no, I was like, I oh. went to like Korean high school. I was like, oh my uh, God. No, like, 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 like to learn <laughs> Korean, right? So um, I never went. So the way I learned a language is like, let's say like, kyok and like, digun and stuff. Like I, I would just learn it by like the pronunciation. Mm. Ku, du. Mm. And so one day my Tepinim comes to our young stream and he has a whiteboard and he's like, he writes Kyoki, he's like, you go boya. And I, I go, ku. And he goes, what? And I'm like, ku. And he writes something else. You go boya. I'm like, dude. 
I got in so much trouble well, that you're day. You're not wrong. I'm not I mean, wrong. <laughs> yeah, but he's like, no, but I actually agree with him because uh-huh. I never uh, properly learned the Names. like alphabet. I never uh, learned yeah. it was mm. Kyok. Oh. I never learned right, that. Right. I, I just know it by pronunciation. Yeah, oh, yeah, I just know what sound it makes. I do the same thing that you do. Yeah, <laughs> even and now. It, so I mean, I don't think it's a wrong way to learn. I did have a Korean teacher later down, like right before we debuted. She, I did have a Korean teacher. She was amazing. Uh, she was like a wonjang at like a Korean like uh, a and. English Institute. So she knew how to speak English. Mm. She was angel, loved her. She was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to get you ready for broadcast. So she started teaching me like the more important sajasongos, like the four Ah. character hantas, those kind of things that are used quite often. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was about it. I mean, do I remember them? No, but like, (laughs) honestly, when I first started Arirang, like Mm -hmm. when I started looking at my scripts, I was like, how am I supposed to do this? It was, you know, I still struggle. That's the thing. Like, cause you know, at Arirang, they do give us the scripts in Korean. So like I have the Google Translate app, so you can do it all in real time. Like you just hold the phone up to it and it translates it. And that's <laughs> literally what I do out in the lobby every time I see you. <laughs> like a lot of people might wonder this: Who did you train with that people might know now? I was supposed to be in a group with Pua. Oh, oh wow! So Pua and I were supposed to be a duet. So it wasn't Isaac and Gian, oh. it was Isaac and Boa. Probably. <laughs> Once again, I had to do re- re- research for the program. So I mean, you know, you, you, you know Boa and you know all these about anybody else that like people might know. Junsu was my sonbe at the time. Xia Junsu. Oh wow. Oh. So apparently I signed my contract in August, but because of the moving process, I was waiting on an apartment that they were going to give me like a dorm, like a sukso, and I was waiting for that. So I couldn't get on a plane right away. Oh. And I was trying to match the school year, but I ended up missing it because I auditioned so late. Right. So I needed to get like school paper ready and like all that other stuff. And I got there in October. October, like the the end of October ish, it was really cold. I remember mm-hmm. it was really cold. And Chunsu apparently had already been training since about August. So mm-hmm. apparently we signed the contract around the same time, but he had been already uh, in the like the training in the process. training process. I don't know if this can actually make the cut, but Tang Nara was also a trainee at the time. Oh wow! So Tang Nara only was also a trainee. Homi only, who later debuted as Milk, she mm-hmm. was in Shinwa's Yo Milk music video at the time. She was like the Yuna. Of uh, SM at the time. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, like, when you did find out you were debuting, you debuted with Jian, yeah. you remember, as a duo, right? And you mm-hmm. guys were the female version of Fly to the Sky. Of Fly to the Sky. I yeah. love Fly to the yeah, Sky. They were like the same thing, duo. You guys were the female version of Right. Them. We learned that, like, while we were recording. Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> Well, I mean, like when you actually debuted, though, what do you remember about your album promotions, your debut? Like, you sure we have enough time to tell oh everything oh, yeah, about no, that? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, because I can just with the stuff that I hated, I can think. I think I can go like on <laughs> twelve hours. We might ask. I might have to bring some of the alcohol. Yeah. I saw. Sorry. <laughs> some be going down. Uh, we need to start a new series about like the hell that was debut. Uh-huh. So I was talking with my youngest writer that I work with in radio. Mm-hmm. There's obviously a very big gap in generation between us. Right. She's like a current fan. Random person. She likes so, to okay. X. <laughs> the thing about her is these days you rarely release a full length yeah, album. Uh-huh. For us at the time, we promoted for 10 months out on one album. Wow, 10 months? Yeah. Oh my that's, God. That's old. So we had three one. title tracks off of our debut album. Wow. So our t- lead single and then our Husokok, our follow up track, and then our Matsimak, like Makbang. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, um, like the last few stages. That was 10 months. That was 10 months. They don't do that now. It's like they do it, what, four weeks at max. Like when we debuted, I think the norm was like six to eight weeks. So we would do like four (laughs) weeks of like our title song and then like for two weeks, right? Like a goodbye like stage or whatever. Right before our team like went our separate ways, it was like for us, it was two weeks, two to three weeks. For really big comeback stars, it's like actually one or two full rotations of the Mm -hmm. music programs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did four weeks and I almost died. Back then, our schedule is very different. We didn't have them almost every single day. These days, Arirang tapes at what? Every two weeks on Monday, then you have the show on Tuesday, you have show show champion. Uh, show champion on Wednesday, Thursdays MK, Music Bank, Umjung, and then Inkigao. That's all seven yeah, days. Right. Yep. We barely had that. We had the three on the weekend, but getting into the three on the weekend was a pain in the behind. Like yeah, even yeah. though we were SM, really, yeah, it was really hard to get your foot in the door. The only reason why we ever got more airtime on Inkigao was because Kangta was the MC at the time. Oh, oh wow, wow. Uh, it was just a very different time in the entertainment world. Mm-hmm. And that used to be shocking him. 
And oh, wow. I, don't know, I don't know what that is. Yeah, Shook Kingdom was the name of it. We would do the show in Namdaemun, and there was this like big Tutuk shopping mall mm -hmm. that actually had people like, come do clothing shopping. Right. But on the 13th floor, it was an empty place. And like so a they studio. Would, yeah. So we would get there early, do dry rehearsal. There was not a lot of sanoks back then, so pre recordings for like stages was not a big thing. Right. So it was pretty much all done in real time. So camera <laughs> rehearsal would be exactly like the live show. Right. So oh. they want us in hair makeup. Makeup, in our clothes what we're gonna be doing like we're pretty much doing two shows yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. me and my member and like my entire team we loved being the first or second group did you get to leave no right you don't leave no, no. i can keep my hair and makeup but like i can be more comfortable and just wait for the show to finish yeah wow your group was called isak and jian every time i go to like i'm like oh who's the next guest on the korean cowboys i was like oh, i'm inviting isak and they were like from isak and jian a lot of people actually know you and isak and jian and they're like she's still in korea like, i've tried to do a very hard hard job of not being out there like mm -hmm. in the public in the public eye uh -huh. i think that i wasn't ready to be a celebrity i'm the type of personality i don't know if it's my mbti i don't know <laughs> if it's like my zodiac sign i don't know if it's my blood type i don't know what it is but if you give me something i refuse to half-ass it i can be wrong but i refuse to admit that i can't study i can't learn about that situation oh, wow. right. so i never intended to be a vocalist but they kept making me do vocal lessons and mm -hmm. i didn't want to leave that vocal lesson not hearing a compliment right, so right, right. i worked my butt off naturally my member was way better at singing that's why she's still in musicals i think mm -hmm. i wanted to be a radio host but at 14 i didn't know what i wanted to do with my life right i feel that 14 year olds these days have way more ideal of their future then right yeah everyone's like so like sure of what they want to do especially like in terms of k-pop where like the system has grown so much right to, like, mm -hmm. when you debut when i debuted even when you debuted like the system is so different and well Way different. thought of right. Built right now right so yeah it, it is a good time for people that do you want to get into like K-pop? It's a good time for them to start, I feel like. Right. Globalized, definitely. definitely. Yeah. I've always actually also wondered about this. How did you find out? Like after after you, you're promoted, right? And then you never ended up putting out a second album. Right. Like We never could disband it. Okay. If that makes any sense. I mean, uh, why are you uh, eyes so watery? Oh, it's just so sad, you know, between <laughs> between all the Isak and Jian songs that I love so much. But <laughs> I told you he was gonna grill me on this. <laughs> what do you mean? But um, what do you call it? Um, like how, so your group kind of just I hate to say it, it's like faded away. Yeah, yeah. How did that happen? We finished our promotions. Just one day I had nothing to do. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I literally like... woke up. I didn't have any schedule. I couldn't go to the practice room because all the trainees were using them. I couldn't use a booth anymore because mm -hmm. there were so many trainees. I was too advanced mm -hmm. to take a dance class with them. Like I'm the artist, like, like you know, yeah, don't yeah, do yeah. that. And like, so... I was left with nothing. And at first it was great because like, oh man, it's a vacation. We've been like grinding for the past 10 months. It's great. And it was around summer time, if I remember right. So we just said that, yeah, we don't have any schedule anymore. You know, like show, like, you know, whatever. And I didn't know what to do with myself uh, because yeah. I had trained for about three to four years. Now that my album was over, I had already graduated high school. I wasn't going to college. Nobody was there to kind of be like, do you want to go to college? Mm -hmm. I can help you get a, into college. I right. didn't know how to do it. Right. These days you can go online and you can find every Korean college has an English site pretty much. Right. Yeah. But at the time they didn't. And so yeah, like yeah. any school that I wanted to go to, if I wanted to go in, I needed to read Korean, but all the Korean was not the Korean I know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it was like all these like Chinese characters and like they were actually in Chinese characters. I was like, <laughs> yeah what hunter is that right so yeah i didn't know what to do with myself so i started partying a lot thank you for not having good quality phones now I know. Like, we were talking about that earlier Ooh. um but yeah i uh i really ended up just kind of falling in the wrong hands so to speak like i was partying a lot drinking okay. a lot and then my mom came to visit me and she was like you're not staying here oh. and so she's like i'm putting you in college in the fall and so we're leaving. I, we ended up like making that arrangement. And in the midst of me getting ready to go back to the States, my members started getting up really early and she's a heavy sleeper. Right. And I was like, where is she going? We were sharing room, a room at the time. Mm -hmm. We were going to the same church. And one night, like my member was just like, you know what, look, we need to talk. And she was like, I think there's just something wrong here and we need to like clear the air. And so I was like, yeah, I think we should too. And she was just like, they told me that you're leaving me for to go to the States. Like, you're abandoning me. And I'm like, no. My mom wants me to go to college. 
Mm-hmm. That's why I'm going back to the States. Yeah. And I was like, they told me that you're going to be debuting in Sansang D because you didn't want to be in the group anymore. So there was a lot of he said, she said. Okay, like miscommunication like, and. Uh, I feel that it was a little in, on purpose. On purpose, yeah. Trying and, to like split us apart right, so right, that right, they it. would do be able to do what they wanted to do with her. Right. And I was like, I mean, go for it. I really support you. I think this is going to be a great opportunity. Go for it. Good luck. And I went back to the States. I did uh, two semesters at community college. I tried to get out of my contract the following year. Everything went up to the last signature. All Mr. Lee needed to do was sign the signature and I would have been free. Right. And he was just like, excuse me, you guys are letting her go. Oh, wow. And everything went came crushing down again, and I ended up right. moving back to Korea. And I started taking acting lessons because I kept going to SM every day. And I was like, I want to learn something. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to learn something. Put me in a class. Right, right. Put me in a class. And so I was mm-hmm. put into an acting class. Then I all of a sudden went for a meeting. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing Tower Stage as an MC. Okay. And then shortly after that, I started working at Arirang. Oh. Okay. So that's how it kind yeah. of all happened. Oh. The thing is, we've never really disbanded. And to say that we have disbanded even now, it's kind of like iffy too. Because honestly, if my member ever wants to do another album, I wouldn't mind. It's just I don't really like being in the eye anymore. I don't right. like being a celebrity. Right. Yeah. I like my job and mm-hmm. I love hosting and stuff like that. But I like to split who I am on my show. Like, I want my show to be popular. I want Arirang Radio to be popular. I don't want to be popular. Mm. Right. I dealt with plenty of hate comments and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting too old for that. <laughs> it's like work is work and then private life is like private right, life. Right, right, right. And like, I don't want to have to be like, I don't, I know that you say that I'm an inspiration. It's fine for that. But like, I don't mm. want girls or anybody saying like, you're my role model. I'm just like, no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, r- wrong role model. <laughs> I'm actually curious. You brought this up like your MBTI no. and your blood type mm. and, and uh, your zodiac sign. Right. What is your MBTI? I'm an ENTP. I really don't get why I'm an E. Yeah. I don't understand any of those letters, so I know what, one is extra. What's your zodiac sign? I'm a Gemini. Gem- oh, Gemini. Yeah, I'm a Gemini. Yeah. Where Where are we living with all this zodiac talk? Like, <laughs> what's your sign? Like, what's, your blood, what's your blood type? Oh, oh, I'm an O oh. too. Okay, okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What's your MBTI? E ENFJ. Could you believe that? E-N-F- You're a J. No, no. INFJ. You're I-N-F-J? a J. Uh, I guess. I don't know. I took the quiz. I don't. I don't know. You're not. You're not organized. <laughs> oh, no, I am. I'm very organized. Well, just, you know, when I'm on the radio, I'm like ruffling papers, but I am very organized. I am character, you know what really? I'm saying? No, I really am. Like, oh. you know, so if someone calls me out, I'm like, a, like, on a, like, like, hey, I'm, let's hang out in an hour. I'm like, no, you should have job on this like yesterday. I ain't oh, coming okay. out of the house. Oh, okay, okay. No. Oh, they, okay. Yeah, they <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, enough. yeah. I, I'm in for a treat because she agreed that she'd do this. So a lot of people do know who Isak is. A lot of okay. people in Korea know who Isak and Isak and Jian is. So a lot of people <sighs> will know this song if you sing a short part of it. If you guys like Inuyasha. <laughs> Inuyasha. Isak Nuna actually sang on the OST for Inuyasha oh, wow, yeah. when, when it made its run in Korea. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think all the SM artists were on that Pretty album. much. So, like, I guess SM had a hold on the uh, the anime market with the OSTs. But uh, Isak Nuna, would you mind singing oh the song that you sang for the... <laughs> She's looking up the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sing one of the main parts. Okay, the p- part that people would recognize oh. if they heard it. Oh, my God. Here we go. That is what I'm talking about. Mm -mm -mm. You see why why she inspires me? She's a good singer just like me. (laughs) And you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, come on now. Not Joel's Richard. Oh, no, I don't know the loud one. (laughs) (laughs) I know the the, the boa one, kind of. I don't know. What is it? Is it? Every heart. Na 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 na. I don't know. I, it's something like that. Because I used to be. I was a big, big Inuyasha fan. Yeah, I that know. had nothing to do with you. I swear. No, I was. I was a big Inuyasha fan. I but, remember he t- he told me about this maybe last week. He's like. 
oh my god like you know like how i love inuyasha and i'm just like yeah and he's like can you believe like he's not gonna like saying like the ost for it oh my god like mind-blowing and i, I did not like, say it like yeah, you that did. I you know like, what i was like oh my god <laughs> i don't think we have time for it maybe we like to do like a part two later down the mm-hmm. line but there was a loophole for me doing that song so you know how the seven-year contract thing changed mid my contract like that mm-hmm. law passed pretty recent yeah yeah apparently that law passed right around the time i got that song oh really oh wow so for me to this day i feel that that was kind of like a loophole that i fell into Uh, um but i'm very thankful because i love the song i record that song in la the original was recorded in la because i was friends (laughs) with a production team like a producing team that works with sm in la Mm -hmm. and they were like oh we sent that studio like the instrumental and like the lyrics, practice it, record it, and then send it to us. And I'm just like, me? No. By myself? But it's Inuyasha, so it's like, you know what I'm saying? No, but I listened to the song and I was like, I love this song. It's so good. I, like it was, and when I let my mom listen to it, she's like, yeah, you need to do this kind of music. And I was like, mom, I have no say in this. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you know, you're doing radio DJing now. You have been for the last however long. Um, I wanted to ask, because for all of the K-pop artists that debut, they always go through you. Yes. Like they, they don't they, ask me who was my best team. No, no, I'm not asking oh. who the best team was. No, no. Who don't was, ask me who was the best interview. It's like, oh, because remember. you've literally you've got you've interviewed from like BTS yeah. to everybody. Like you've interviewed everybody. Yeah, I feel like 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 your show is like a show not that like you. <laughs> did we not? No. We didn't? Oh. I looked through the, the archives to find like funny pictures for this today, and Absolutely. I could not find Nui's stuff. Really? There. My company didn't let her go on her program. I she was, asked. And right, my, we did. We got also we yeah, got turned down. And apparently, I actually know why. Because a lot of my members did a lot of Meyer Shirsu on Bang Sung, like things that you shouldn't be saying. So they were like, it's too dangerous to put them on radio. So they didn't put us on mm. radio because they were afraid we were going to like sagu <laughs> chow. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I, I, I didn't even barely speak Korean at the time, so you don't have to worry about me. But I do want to ask, you've been doing radio DJ, VJ, MC, musical actress, comedian, blah, 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 oh, yeah, blah, all I this did stuff. That too, yeah. But radio seems to be your passion. Yeah, no, it yeah. is. It is. It is. I love radio. I mean, you've done radio too, yeah, but yeah. it's just, it's a different vibe in itself. Two hours goes by really fast. Um, being able to communicate with our listeners like through real time now because like we have the YouTube live stream. It's, it's a lot of fun. Like I love right. talking about Korea. It's something that, I mean, we all just talked about this today about how much we struggled when we were here. Yep. And like I don't want anybody to go through that, if that makes yeah. any sense. And like right. when I interview artists, I always go into that as well. Because even though I was an SM artist, I'll be very honest with you, a lot of those Korean radios at the time were mean. Mm-hmm. Like the DJs were mean i was like if i ever become a d like if i ever become a radio dj i am never gonna do that to those kids yeah. i'm never gonna do that to any rookie group and so honestly if a group comes out that's been in the business for a while i mean i treat them the same but i make especially careful when it right. comes to rookie groups if it's their first radio yeah i try to take care of them as much as possible that's great see, I, that's commendable see man my btl company should have put me on that damn show <laughs> Man, come on. She, she was going to take care of us. And man, yeah, I mean, I but I understand from the company's <laughs> perspective because if a certain member tends to constantly say certain things, like even if I was a CEO, mm-hmm. I would be like, let's send this member out instead of everybody. First, when V-Live started coming, I was like, oh my God. There's been who's some, some bumps on Who's going to who's gonna start dealing with that damage control? <laughs> yeah. But, well, there's been some things on V-Live that, you know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes <laughs> it's stuff be popping up. Yeah. I think we need to start a new series, like a, a sub-series. <laughs> within like talking about that kind of oh stuff. my gosh we don't have a lot of time left but who was your most memorable guest top three come on i mean honestly though like from a dg perspective i think like all guests are pretty memorable yeah no? they are i think the most fun that i've always had is when idols surprise me mm-hmm. and the times idols surprise me i do show a lot of love to ace uh mm. the group ace they were just a big bundle of energy when they came onto mm-hmm. the yeah, show yeah, and yeah. it was their very first radio show mm. and I could tell they were really nervous but you could see them like fighting that like mm. nervousness like, yeah, like yeah. you were pushing through mm. that first interview and it was so cute yeah mm. yeah and but, then their songs are super good too more so than like actual interviews there's a segment that now we're doing with DKB we teach Korean like idols English oh, through like okay. scenarios and stuff like that I think like segment wise that's been the most memorable segment oh. Okay. Because I've seen the members actually use these at fan meetings. That's Isaac Nuna inspiring generations. Wow. 
You know what I'm saying? I Third generation, goes, fourth generation. I don't think it goes that far. They keep but. going, y'all. <laughs> like I said, to this day, I'm still a fangirl. So I think that's why mm. I'm still able to do radio. It's right. because I I am still a fan. And right, I, right. to this right. day, fangirl over groups. And so I know what you want to listen to. Yeah. I know what you guys want. And I mm-hmm. don't want to make them uncomfortable right, right, right. to make the... The fans uncomfortable. Right. I want this to be a safe haven for everybody, but we can add a little bit of egg yo, mm-hmm. and you know we can add some stuff on top of it. So shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's kind of why I like my job so much. Yeah. Are you kicking me out? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. <laughs> like, are you kicking me out? This like is are we supposed to be like done now? Because you no, keep no, no. looking down. <laughs> no, no. I because I, I I also work on. Um, the radio with Isak. Yeah. So you guys should listen. Yes. yes. Give your plugs, girl. What's up? <laughs> if you want to listen to Adidang Radio, we have a free application. Uh, we also have our homepage. It's www.adidangradio.com. Also, I'm from 12 to 2 p.m. Korea Standard Time. 2 to 4 a.m. We have a rerun show. Mm-hmm. You can still watch it through our YouTube channel. I'm not the only DJ at Adidang Radio. Former Latest Code member Ashley is still working there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Sam Carter from Luna Fly. He's a <laughs> DJ there. He's, he's still there. He's been wow. there for like 50 <laughs> um, years. He started we, like with me. <laughs> and we have really good news programs. I love our news programs. I, I feel that the reason why I've been able to stay is just because I believe in the content that we do, even though it's not my show. We love Arirang. <laughs> <laughs> 사장님 보고 계시나요? <보이시나요? laughs> yeah. Look at, 사장님, look at Isang Luna coming out here and homeboying Arirang like this. <laughs> but, no, uh, but the, like, next, like, next time if like, if like the opportunity does like arise, mm-hmm. like we should go as like the Korean Cowboys. Yeah, can you invite as us a as a guest? Yeah. Come on now. You know you, you want to. We'd love to. So when are you guys? Yeah. Can, I plug, can I plug you in for we got, August? We got a win-win on this. Oh you know yeah, what? August. Yeah. Okay, so we're unfortunately almost out of time, but before we end, wait, put on us. I oh, I know what you're have gonna have a putak for you that has I have waited. How many years is 2008? It's about like, 14 years now. 14 years. This is 14 years in the making. Oh. I need you to sign my Isaac <laughs> and Gian album. Oops, it's upside down. I have had this since 2008, oh and I have been way too embarrassed to ask you to sign it for me, but I brought my sign pen, but this is this is actually a paint marker that I've had since I was in BTL, so please sign my album. He was so excited coming to the studio today. He was like, hey, look, look what I found in my house. I'm gonna get it signed. I've been no, waiting for literally. <laughs> Wait, you, where do I sign this? I'll sign it here. You can sign it twice. One's on the picture and then one on the cover. Yokshim mm. <laughs> Jengi. <laughs> Just sign your shirt while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> is the pen coming out all right? I need uh, to like, you know. I've never seen him more excited. This is our first female guest. Oh and my God, am I? You yeah, are. I am. We've only had two guests up until now. Yeah. Gi and Greg. Yeah. And you're the first female guest. Yeah. Going down. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, give me a message too. Lord Jesus have mercy. Oh, why are your eyes seem so watery? Oh, they're not watery. It's okay. What do you mean? I saw see you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us in the Korean Cowboys getting mm. signed CDs. That's and... right. I mean, oh that's my a, God, I, I haven't look. signed a CD in like ages. I normally don't do this. Like literally like ever. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've signed a CD in like forever either. <laughs> wow, it's been so long since I've seen Yay. that. Look what our PD just gave me. Wait, so, you guys are signing something for me too? <laughs> we have like... <laughs> what is this? So we, we have these like printed out like postcards. Oh, what? Sign for me. All right, I'm gonna sign this to Isang Luna. Thanks. Thanks. Pen, pen sucks. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that brought it. Well, I know, but it's like seven years old for crying out I'm loud. I'm surprised it even works. <laughs> yeah, right? Honestly, I'm just surprised it even works. Okay, we, have, we have another one right here. Yeah, I know. Mm. You wanna use this one? There you go. Wow! Yeah. Yay! Wow. I get a signed CD after, uh, like, I don't know, 14 years, and she gets that little piece of paper, you know? <laughs> an eye yes. for an eye. <laughs> so in August, um, if our schedules do align and, you know, we get the OK confirmation, you guys mm-hmm. will see us on uh, Isak's yeah. show. Yeah. Probably by the time they edit this, <laughs> it probably might go up around the same time. This is probably coming out next week? Next week, I think. Yeah. yeah. Are, you guys, are you guys at that fast? Oh, no. We oh, will. yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, well, thank you so much, Isak, for coming out. Sure. Um, we might have to do a follow-up someday, but uh, I appreciate it. And yes. it's if you very want, insightful. If you want like an old person, like latte talk type of a mm-hmm. segment, I can come. There's like a whole, s- we only got through the first page today of questions. Um, yeah, I know. Mm. You guys can follow us oh. on Instagram at the Korean Cowboys podcast. Mm-hmm. Send us an email at hello at koreancowboys.com. Aaron, I always be forgetting what the TikTok is. So you can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter is Korean underscore oh, yeah. Cowboys. Our mm-hmm. TikTok is uh, Korean. 
Korean Cowboys. Our TikTok is Korean Cowboys. Yeah, look us up on there. To they released emoticons, like gifts on Instagram too. So don't forget to use yeah, those. Yeah. Oh, those. yeah. A, a fan sent them. Or yeah. Them. Oh, really? Yeah. A listener of ours actually made us uh, emoticons on Instagram. So make sure to two use fans. them. Two fans. Yeah. Two, two fans. fans. So thank you guys very much. You know, yeah, as um, soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. I'm going to be using them. I, yeah. I haven't used them yet, but I will be. Well, yeah. when this episode goes up, I'm going to be using them. There yes. we go. There we yeah. go. We should use them. Yeah. Mm, we should. We yes. should. All right. So we have like a like a little sign off thing that we do. So we go like three, two, one. Yeehaw! yee-haw. Yeah, yeah. But it's not yee-haw. It's yee-haw. Ha. Like a, you know, mm, yeah. You know, one and two and three and four. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you don't forget your four counts now, do you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh. guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in this week. And we will come back next week with another fun video for you guys. We yes, hope you guys yes. have a good week. And we yeah, ready? stay safe. Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. Yee-haw! See you guys next week. Bye-bye.